Everybody, this is B from Kongs R Us. Welcome to the Next Level. This is my weekly podcast show where we bring you next level things, guests, community members, and uh, it's a it's a little interesting and a little tearjerker thinking that I might be saying that for the last time. That's the intro that I've been using for this podcast show called The Next Level that I've been doing for about three a little little over three years now, and it started in January 2021. It's been a fun journey. I've asked several guests to come on, and I'm going to have them on in just a little bit. But uh, I want to thank everybody that's here in the chat watching this live. If you've stuck with me and you've been one of my original fans that have, uh, you know, tuned in to some of the early shows, I uh, did a lot of different things back then. Uh, but or if you're a brand new subscriber who's been following me recently with all my other mods that I've done, I just appreciate kind of the growth of the channel and where we've been at for the last three and a half years. I started my YouTube journey. Uh, just about four years ago. It's about four years to the day. I think it was end of March, a beginning of April, where I published my very first YouTube video. My very first YouTube video was how to mod your Star Wars arcade one up. And it was uh, the thing that launched my YouTube career. Did I ever think I would be a YouTuber at some point? Uh, I didn't really know. I thought I had an idea to at least, hey, share some cool stuff. I always thought YouTube was a platform for us to, uh, you know, be adult show and tell of the cool things we liked. And as I did that mod and I did a tutorial, I slowly released content over the next couple of months, but it was all produced content. And it was like one, one or one video a month, maybe. And then it was all, I didn't even have my face on the, the camera screen yet. It was all hands and it was tutorials and things. And it, once I discovered the live stream concept, it allowed me and it transformed my channel to be able to do regular content for people to watch. I could talk for an hour or do a modding session or do something else. And so I've enjoyed the live streaming concept and I appreciate it, those that have enjoyed tuning in to listen to me, watch, ramble. Uh, and then I discovered the community and all the other guests that have done so many cool things in this home arcade space, in this modding world emulation, custom builds, people that I think are fantastically smarter than I am and, and super cool. I loved talking with every single one of them over the past 100 plus episodes. And so I was like, what if, what if I created the show to be able to highlight that community specifically, where if I didn't have a mod I was talking about, I can bring on somebody else that did something cool. If you did anything that was next level that garnered attention in one of our Facebook groups or any other community that we saw, that was the main reason why we really put this together. Uh, and it started in January. My very first guest I ever had on was this guy named Alan Daggs. You might see him in the community chats, but he built a Star Wars cockpit and we worked together. And I was like, this would be a great first episode. Uh, and so I, I think about the, the reason why I started the show. Uh, and so this is now the series finale, three and a half years later. Um, where have I come to this decision to, you know, say that this is the last show of the next level? Uh, and it comes down to a few different things. If you kind of already can guess, right? I think one, 
hobbies and things change. I think that's one of the first things. I'm going to even put my little overlay at the top, uh, the bottom right corner. Um, hobbies change. People's interests change. I think naturally the course of time, even the greatest TV shows and whatnot, uh, they kind of have their run. Uh, and sometimes the scope of what the show started off was is different than what it is now. Uh, it took me a long ass time to upgrade my equipment. I finally look fancy with a nice ass camera. Uh, thank you, Justin Console Kits. Um, but I found myself in these last few months, especially with the home arcade companies not producing a lot of content to kind of talk about and keep the modding scene. Uh, it's it got modding became very different than, than the early days when we used to have to these cheap cabs and we wanted to mod them to be better. Now we have expensive cabs and we have options and choices to make to mod them further or not. Um, and so, uh, not I love the modding portion of the hobby. I always did, um, but the weekly grind of coming up with the show topic, if you could guess, was probably the most draining part for me personally, that every week it would come up to Thursday. I originally was doing Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, and I've kind of ranged within the 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Pacific timeframe. So I always thought Thursdays were like my day to stream. I just wanted to make sure I had a day. My wife and family knew that Thursdays uh, were daddy's streaming time and that they would set some time aside. So for the last three years, every Thursday, I'd either be thinking about a concept to do or um, I'd have to put up a post and say, hey, I'm not going to do a show today. And I, bit, I felt like I was pretty good about it. Um, but there are definitely weeks where I missed a couple of different shows for various reasons. But I came to that realization where if, it, if it's becoming a little bit more of that, that chore to come up with a topic instead of just being really excited about talking about a mod or something, I think it's, it's time for that change. And I think this is that healthy change that I was looking for within my YouTube channel. So it's not a complete goodbye. It's not for people that are thinking that like, hey, say you're not quitting YouTube. It's not a quitting YouTube. Absolutely not. It's the series finale of this original show concept that I put together where weekly I would be coming on. Um, and so I have several people backstage. I want to start bringing them on one by one uh, just to kind of reminisce on some of the show topics that we did together. Uh, happy to kind of bring them on in some of the earliest stages. So I'm going to bring you guys in kind of chronologically from some of the first people I work with to kind of the later folks. And so um, I think one of the first episodes I ever did um, on the channel, uh, I don't I don't know if it was with Brad or not, but Brad, you're going to be hey. tonight. How are you, man? Man, I was great until I heard the topic of this episode. <laughs> like, wow, man. So yeah. it's been it's been three years. That, yeah. that, you know, uh, you've been doing this show and it's been awesome. I've been a viewer. I've been a guest. Um, I think uh, you actually invited me on in your prototype version of the next level when you were doing your live modding of OutRun back in 2020. Yes. And uh, yeah, and then you came up with this great concept for the show to show off all these, you know, the wizards and the modders and all these people working to, to pimp their calves. And uh, mm -hmm. you invited me on uh, pretty early on. Um, and I was just thrilled. I was telling all my friends, Hey, tune in, you got to check out this show, you know, but, uh, it, it, it seems like a long time ago. And at the same time, it feels like it was yesterday. Right. I was looking back and seeing like, it really was over three years ago. Uh, and, and you're right. You were one of the first people I was modding the original arcade star Wars with. And so that's why I wanted to bring you on first. Cause I think the collaboration we had in those days was, Hey, I'm doing something cool. Oh, you're trying something. Let me connect with this guy and see if we can work on something together. And we were like troubleshooting and problem solving certain oh, things together. Like how yeah, do we were, the ratios work? I mean, you made an amazing video. I was just a, a fan. I wanted to mod my arcade one up, uh, Star Wars. Um, but I wanted to do it a little different than yours and I had problems. So I hit you up and you helped me out. And then you got a couple ideas from stuff I was doing. Next thing you know, we're tweaking software builds for front ends and putting buttons and bezels. And yeah, um, it, it just, I, I instantly just, you know, you were my first arcade buddy and you are still my arcade buddy. So I quickly got into the scene because of people like you, because I started my own YouTube channel just a couple months after we met. Brad D, check out Brad D. I'll leave a comment in the uh, description and for all the good stuff. So yeah, it's yeah. just a ton of fun, you know, to to do these mods and uh, collaborate. And then, you know, a couple of years later, we collaborated on a Tron mod, which brought me right back to the Star Wars days. Um, it was just amazing. And then, you know, for the next level show, um, you uh, brought me on to uh, to show off the uh, the gun cart that I made in late 2020. Um, 
Yeah, and I just remember the, the, the low tech like yeah. webcams we were using for that stuff, you know, at the time and running <laughs> extension cords. So. Yeah, we're doing all sorts of things. I got you on for the Tron one for sure. We're doing stuff there. Uh, the gun cart. I think I had you on with this gun cart. Um, where is it? It's an alien gun cart mod with it would have been early on. This one right here. No, no there no. it is. Wait, is no. It? The thumbnails are so small. I know they're so small. Don't worry, it's coming. It's coming. There's over 100 episodes. There's a lot. Oh of my stuff gosh, there. so many it's episodes! Right. Shoot. Episode number 10. You're on episode number 10. You had already done uh, 10 by that point. Yeah. So this was us, and you put together that alien gun cart bot, and then I had um, Juan Pablo on earlier at the same time. So and he had that awesome tapper mod and all that. Stuff. Oh my god, look, it's my old bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, right? Just such fun of talking about your shooter cab. And then Juan Pablo, I invited him to come on, but he's the one that made that really crazy outrun cabinet uh, that did a sit down. Fun he made thing tons there, of stuff. He made fun stuff too, but this was fun. Anyways, this is just an example of me, uh, you know, highlighting some cool stuff that people are doing. Uh, I thought both of you were fantastic modders. And it was cool bringing multiple people together to kind of see the different expertises together. Oh. And yeah, and it was just like when you and I collaborated on Star Wars. The people that I met through your show and your live streams, I've collaborated with them. I've done live streams with them. Um, I've totally stolen their ideas to put on my own cabs. It's it's been a ton of fun. Um, I I'm I'm sad to see it go, but you know I I have these videos to look back on. You know, and it, it's just it's it's treasures. Thank you for the treasures. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for you know being a part of that initial early phase. And you know I think. I love being able to meet you in person. I think that's one of my favorite things that we got to do was actually connect in real life and play some pinball, yeah. have a drink. So yeah, cheers. that was fantastic. Go and playing like hidden pinball and stuff. Mm -hmm. And just now B and I are on opposite coast of the country. So it took us a couple of <laughs> years to connect, but you know, it's just yeah. when we did connect, it was like we were old friends. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, cool, man. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going to bring a couple people backstage and uh, uh, we'll bring you back on a little bit later on. So thanks again. All right. Thanks, Brad. Uh, for a quick shout out to the chat, everybody that's here. I mean, uh, thank you all, but I mean, huge, huge shout out to Jason Lil Alien with the $50 super chat. Thank you so much, Jason. I know you're an amazing community member, moderator for so many channels. I appreciate you looking out for everybody. Um, but you say, sad day for sure, B. Learned so much from your show the past three years and really feel like I got to know the family. We'll always be there for you, bro, and hope you'll be popping around when there's especially interesting things to talk about. Thank you. I absolutely will. So this isn't a goodbye from YouTube. I still plan to make content. I actually still owe some content produced videos. So my plan is to pivot to, uh, you know, just making more produced videos less frequently than a weekly live stream. You know, I have a couple of um, products that uh, I need to get reviewed. Um, and so I'll be getting those out in the next month or so. And then I think the live stream isn't gonna go away 100%. I just wanna save it for a true topic that I'm really passionate about and then not just have to save it for a weekly show. So uh, that's the that's the plan and idea. So thank you so much for that, Jason. I really appreciate that. It's one of the, the larger donations I've gotten on the channel. Absolutely appreciate that. Um, and for old Titan's sake, you know, because Mrs. Kong's or us uh, is not here, I did wanna mention, I talked to my wife about this decision. Uh, this also applies to my Sunday fun day show with Mrs. Kong Zaraz. I told her that, you know, every Sunday we'd get around to like 3 p.m. and be like, hey, you wanna do a show or not? And then she'd be like, okay. And like, what are we gonna talk about? It's like, I don't know. And like, it was this dance every single time. And I love doing the show with her. She loved having an opportunity to just have fun on camera. Um, but again, the same concept, it was still a lot. So unfortunately, uh, you know, this is not only the series finale of the Next Level show, uh, for now, it will be the series finale of our Sunday Fun Day show. I asked Mrs. Kong to Russ earlier. Um, she had to leave and was like, hey, do you want to do a Sunday Fun Day show finale? And she's like, nah, I'm good. You can do your thing. Um, she's supportive of the channel so much. So in honor of Mrs. Kong to Russ and that $5 super chat, uh, we'll go way, way back and uh, go back to Mrs. Kong to Russ's debut on YouTube. If you didn't know, she thought Big Buck Hunter was pretty wild. Hi, this is Mrs. Kong to Russ, and are you ready to get Big Buck wild? Well, let's go. <laughs> Thanks again. Appreciate that so much. All right. So I want to bring on my next guest. Uh, I think early on, uh, I, I remember doing a show about uh, modding tips and things. And so uh, this guy who says, B Kong is my bae. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, Joel? How are you, man? I'm good. How are you, man? It's uh, you, man? 
I gotta show it's you the, display names right now. So <laughs> where it's did been that a running joke from? for like three, four years now. When did when did this joke start? I don't even remember how how we started saying that. <laughs> it started in the wizards. Um yeah. somebody said something or or whatnot, and um yeah, I think I think I commented with my bay that you're my bay, uh -huh. something like that, or get off my bay. It's when the whole bay name was like trending. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I somehow I, I think I called you B Bay or something like that, or Kongs or yeah. Bay, something like that. I don't know, but Kong, it, it was Kong, in the Wizards yeah. group. I know that. Yeah, and awesome. Well, cool. Thanks for for being here, man. I appreciate you. Uh, so for you, you joined my show officially because I, I mean you've gone through your own home arcade modding journey from uh, you know modding your own stuff to starting your own company now, right? And so yeah. I, I think it's really cool to see your story and how you've evolved as a modder to an actual person who's providing so much service to the community in your own way, whether it's your own tutorials or your own service and things. Um, but I brought you on for a show that was called uh, RK went up 101 and modding episode 13. Ep was that was you. episode 13 of the first year. Yeah. It was wow. you, me, uh, mad dads gaming. Yeah. We on here. Do you remember mad dads? I asked I you do. to come on here. I, I miss mad dads gaming. I, but, I miss him too, man. I learned. I don't think he's in the modding community anymore. And I checked yeah. his channel a while, not too long ago, and like he's yeah. not really posting or doing too much anymore on YouTube. I Shout learned out. how to mod from him. Shout out to MDG. Put a one in the chat if you used to watch Mad Dad's gaming because he's one of the original modders doing some crazy stuff. But uh, you know, shout out to Gene. He said he couldn't come out, um, but yeah, he was doing some really cool. Like you know, did one of the first countercade mods and was doing really cool stuff. Uh, making custom things and look at oh you with your dark ass room and like you know <laughs> it was on a laptop camera i had no microphone i just had this headset man yeah. dude my wide mod is back there dude that was gone yeah. for a while actually yeah. mad dads gave me some pointers on when i was doing that because i'm like how am i going to get the screws in? i was going to use corner brackets he told yeah. me to use pocket screws yeah. And I was like, oh, that's good thinking, man. Mm -hmm. So I went out and I got a jig and I did the pocket screws on that. I don't even have those arcades behind me anymore. Yeah. I mean, times have changed. Things uh, you build stuff, you let it go. And you know, we had some good questions like, what are your go-to tools? What mistakes have you made while modding? Tips for applying graphics. So I, I thought this was a really fun kind of show concept for us to just get together and, and share with the community because people uh, started to look to my channel to be kind of for that modding advice. And I always felt like I was you know people say like i'm a good modder but like i i think i just research okay and then i apply certain things but i never really thought i was an expert in any one thing i always thought you guys and folks that were learning from each other really helped each other so you know all ships I, ride right I, I don't think i ever asked you live how did you figure out the wiring for the star wars yoke like how yeah. did you figure out what color did what yeah i so um tr a lot of trial and error but i got my first hint from this guy named I think his name was Repair Celt. It was a YouTube video that showed how to wire and um, I don't know if it was the, st the stock arcade went up yoke or if something else. I think it might have been, but he he was the one that kind of turned me on to the APAC as an analog wiring controller. Okay. Uh, and then that's where I was just like, all right, let's test it out. And, and you just started you know, going wire for wire? Wire and error, see if it works. And, wow. uh, and that's, that's really what it was, man. And, and my first video was I saw a lot of tutorials and I was like, I think I can explain this better. And like, I remember every, every shot that I took was like five takes of me saying the same thing over and over again. <laughs> it's like a 30 minute video literally took me probably like over four, like 20 hours to produce because I wanted it to be that good as my debut video, but it kind of set me on a path. Um, but you taught me like drilling tips, man. I used to be drilling shit with my, uh, my Forstner bit. You told me about the Forstner bit where I was like, holy shit, this is a life changer, right? It was using right like the... a step bit before or using a hole saw. So I think that's my biggest contribution that you gave to me. You introduced me to the Forstner bit world, which is freaking amazing. Through the Plexi too, at the same Through time. Through the Plexi at the same the Plexi, time. Like the broken same time. My, how many Plexi glasses have you broken in your modding career? Um, Actually, four. Four? You can't four. Even count. One of them, you one of them was a Star Wars. Um, yeah. Star Wars Plexi. It was my second Star Wars mod that I ever did. Um, I was uh, screwing in the uh, one of the green, but one of the red buttons, and I didn't clip off the little the little tabs that are on the back of it. And I was screwing it too hard, and I cracked it. 
Yeah. The the thing was like leaning on it and it cracked. Mm-hmm. Was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? And that's where I was like, oh, um, to die for. He made a video how to make Plexi. So I hopped on his channel and I found that I found his video on how to make Plexi and he was cutting Plexi with a Dremel. So mm-hmm. I'm, I got a Lowe's five minutes from my house. So I ran to Lowe's. I spent $120 on a Dremel. I spent another $40 on Plexi and I came home and I traced it out and I, I just took a shot and I made I had to make a whole new Plexi for that for that piece because I couldn't yeah. give it back to the customer with a broken Plexi. And at that time, there was nobody who was selling Plexis to Star Wars for Star Wars either. That was like year one. That was, was like summer it was, 2020. It was tough, right? Every time you made that crack, it, it meant uh, a lot of redoing of the work. So yeah. um, it was as we get better with tools and things, you have a CNC now, man. Uh, if you can do just a little quick plug on where you're at now with Retro Lizard as I kind of rotate you out and bring in the next folks. But where, where's Retro Lizard today? Three today? Years. Today, Retro Lizard, I mean, as B said, I own my own business now, but I'm cutting my own cabs now. I started out with using the Game Room Solutions cabinets, fantastic company, but now I got my own CNC machine so I can use my own original designs. So taking me a little bit longer now to build because, you know, I'm learning the CNC still and we've got to learn cuts. Everything on the CNC machine is trial and error, but I got my own CNC machine now. I'm actually saving up for a bigger one. I have a 33 by 33 cutting area. I'm saving up for the 48 by 48 cutting area, and I'm hoping to have that in a couple months so that I can completely eliminate Game Room Solutions, and I can even make my own Mega Lizard Arc. Mega Lizard Arcades myself, too. Nice. So, cool. yeah, so that's where I'm at with the business. Hopefully, hopefully this business keeps up, man. I don't have to, you know, I'm, I'm loving what I do. It's stressful. Uh, I was able to quit my real job and do this full time. You're doing arcades full time. Full time. I've been doing arcades full, full time. time since September first, two thousand twenty-two. Full time. So it's man, been that's awesome. it's been a year and a half. Turning your been, hobby into a passion. So absolutely, and it's been four years. Last month, where I started doing the business and the hobby. So yeah. yeah, it's been a long time, man. So that's where I'm at. That's where it is. Retro Lizards. Cool. If you need a custom arcade done, go check out RetroLizardsCustomArcades.com. Everything's an original design, made from scratch, made with tender love and care. And I just want to show one thing before you let me go. I okay. got to meet B once. I did. And I met I him in person. Yeah, we got I, to hang out. It was like seven months ago. We were at Cleveland Gaming Classic. And on the way out, I made it a point to run around and find where B was so that I could say goodbye to the guy. And he was off buying a lizard to give to me. And, dude, thank you so much for this. This was really awesome that you got this for me. And it was so wow. awesome being able to meet you in person. I hope that wasn't the last time. I'm sure we'll meet again. Yeah, but, for sure, man. Thanks for uh, holding on to that, and, and you didn't throw it away. So, uh, <laughs> appreciate you, man. Absolutely, Bye-bye. man. Thanks. All right, see you a bit. I'll, I'll bring you back on in a minute. All right. All right, thanks, Joel. That was fun, kind of checking it out. So, shortly after uh, Joel in that next phase of of modding, uh, there was this newcomer to the light gun scene that I would say really changed the game for many people. Um, I heard he was reaching out to. People like Retro Ralph and and Keo Daikin and myself and was like, hey, you want to test out my guns? I was like, who is this guy trying to sell me this expensive ass gun? Um, but then I saw Arpeg Electronics, the biggest salesperson I know. You are a natural born salesman. Thank you. you. You somehow introduced this entire community. I would say like you are responsible for the gun for IR movement. So. That was fun. Like, like who when you had your product and you were trying to pitch it to the whole arcade community, what was your initial thought on who you would reach out to? Like, how did you find me to even ask me to buy your product and test it out? Do you remember? Uh, that? okay. So actually, it's not my product technically. It's JB's. I'm Correct. just a, I'm just a salesperson for it. But uh, mm-hmm. first off, I met Brad accidentally on mm-hmm. eBay because I was doing an aim track mod to uh mm-hmm. for Jolt Gun. And then uh, he actually bought it off me on eBay, and I tracked his name down. I was like, oh wait, I know, I know this guy's like you know name, and I had his. And from eBay, I have his personal information, his address. I could stalk the shit out of him very easy now. <laughs> and then uh, oh, later, I did Gunfire R. He bought one, and he introduced me to Retro Ralph. I know introduced me to you first, and then to you re- introduced me to Retro Ralph, and then also to Joel. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and uh, I also met B in person. Uh, and I went to his house and said hello. We, my wife met his wife and made sure everyone's real. Yeah. So this, and, this was a stream that we did with JB. Yes. 
the it, and like this is the first time I've seen him like and I know he doesn't do a ton of content but it was exciting to be able to get him on um, have you on talking about the show and, and what the technology was and why it was different uh, and then later uh, we were talking about them jolts oh, look Brad's even here too this is a big show we had Brad on yeah. here uh, Retro Ralph is on here talking about uh, you know gunfire ours versus Sindins versus all the things um, and so this was really fun I think this was kind of the the start of being able to you don't know what you don't know until you compare things. And this was just another way for us to kind of share and compare to the community. Um, so when you look back three years ago and you're kind of like seeing yourself on these shows and where you're at now, like how far has your business gone with kind of the coming onto these shows and, and getting kind of this initial exposure? I'm curious about- uh, Well, I'm just like Joel, I'm also, I've been full-time actually, since you met me, I've been full-time doing a karaoke business, but now Gunfire R is like half my business. Mm -hmm. uh, I still remember the first gun I sold you. I still yes. remember the, the, the pink time crisis gun. I still That's remember right. the bleaching process and the mm -hmm. retro, uh, the retro light process. I've got a retro light going on back there to, to mm -hmm. you know, uh, remove uh, vintage stains. I I brought one here just just as nostalgia, one that I made for you a long time ago. But yeah, now my business is uh, very very steady, and this year will be me and JB. I met JB in person too uh, in Japan, and mm -hmm. uh, we will now be moving on to uh, fully um, integrated circuit boards where we don't have to do okay. any more uh, manual labor. So nice. less manual labor okay. domestically, more internationally. So I've been a Gunfire fan, which is more of a DIY kit for like light gun modders. But now you're making more. It's it is it always going to stay a kit? Do you ever see a day where you're going to make your own Gunfire molded? That is going to be the next step. We're actually just waiting on JB's um like a permanent uh, uh, status in Japan so that he can go full time too. He's also breaking to full time, but uh, due to some um like yeah. legal uh you know uh, regional issues, he can't mm -hmm. quit his job yet. Got it. Okay. But yeah, we will have uh, we will have our own custom mold, and he's already putting a lot of effort into the design of it. Um, yeah. It's gonna be very very cool, and we're gonna have low cost options and everything too. Cool. So I mean, that was cool to be able to kind of be there at the beginning and kind of see your evolution. And I would say for those that still have cool shit that they're gonna be doing, like Brad or Joel or yourself, and you still want another avenue to promote things, I'm not going away 100% for folks that are just joining. I'm just getting away from doing a regular show on Thursday. Sometimes people will come up to me and be like, hey, I have something I want to show off. And I'm like, oh, let's wait till my Thursday show to do it. Now it can be like, fuck it, let's just go right now or whenever, right? And so I still will That's have awesome. the ability to promote and share the good stuff as long as it stays next level. And I think you really did bring a next level product to the home arcade community. So thanks again for, for being there. And we also got to meet in person. I think that yes, was another- hey, I met him in person. He's, a, he he's not as tall as he looks on camera. There, yeah. there is some editing done, okay? <laughs> no, because I, of this guy, I had to update my setup too. Now I have better lighting. I got the expensive <laughs> mics. Shit, cost me like 300 and something bucks. The camera low is under 300. Dude, I spent over like fucking two grand with you, dude. Like from the guns, the pedals, yeah. the upgrades. I, I remember like Raymond just, just, just. Oh yeah, you were out like a grand and a half and a gun and a pedal already. That was already done. <laughs> uh, it's not cheap. My point blank cabinet is beautiful. I love the real guns. You did make a dream come true, uh, you know, with those guns. And so uh, good stuff, man. You are absolutely one of those next level guys that I really appreciate it connecting with and i know you have fun uh, look at you you're a youtuber now you're a karaoke guy a gun for an eye guy and, it's a weird and mix i have to change my logo it. it can't be karaoke only everywhere now <laughs> i have to remove that line from my logo yeah yeah all right sounds good man thanks for hanging out Cheers. i'll bring you on in a second thanks uh quick little shout out to the chat again for here folks that are here uh 20 super chat from a man blast the speakers from fighters evolution 20 super chat says just want to give respect where it's due during a time when the entire community came together, the first online RK one up tournament would never have happened if not for B Kong. B Kong shared his setup with me, et cetera. Blast, thank you so much for that. You know, I was looking back and I invited Blast to come onto the show because um, I was looking back at um, the number of shows that we did. And then you can see it right after, right after the the GRS, or sorry, the um, the Gun for IR. We did the Arcade 1UP Tournament Finals as episode number 15. And then I had Blast the Speakers on a little bit later on, and we were talking about hacking PCBs in the Marvel vs. Street Fighter Tournament. I loved collaborating with Fighters Evo and Rob2D uh, and Akuma Rev. 
uh, you know, those were just fun days where uh, the home arcade retro fighting game scene was just getting started. And I was really proud to have kind of a hand in that and blast the speakers, fighters evolution. Uh, you're a big part of that journey. So this was uh, just to give you a quick shout out there. Uh, this was the tournament finals that I aired on my next level platform. I brought footy laughs, all the people on, and we had a, a, a fun ass time talking about the tourney. There's Eddie Good, Jess Rich, Rev, Webhead. Um, this is a good time, man. I just really appreciate you coming by and saying hello. I wanted to give you a shout out, but that was fun. That was what the show was meant to be to highlight different prospects of the community. So, not only modding, but my freaking passion for Marvel vs. Capcom and it brought this community together. It really sparked the movement, I thought, which is really fun. So, thank you for, for sharing that. I think that was fun to, to relive <laughs> those, those Marvel tournament days. Thanks, Blast. Appreciate you being here. Um, Another another person that was really integral, I would say, that was inspirational to me in the modding community, as well as uh, you know, even the reason why I, I wanted to get into this hobby in the first place is, is the godfather of retro gaming. It's uh, none other than Mr. Glenn Planamento. Glenn, are you there, man? I am, Mr. Kongs. Uh, well, I, it's sad to see it kind of being a end of an era for a weekly show, but I understand why you're doing it. And yeah. it makes it makes sense, but um, I appreciate you having me on and appreciate the kind words because you took to the next level what I did for sure. <laughs> I did stuff with videos. You did stuff live. I mean, you were just <laughs> diving into stuff completely live. And to this very day, my Jira Star Wars joke never would have had a proper home without your Starcade build. Thank you. That's a that's a big testament. I mean, um, I my very first live stream ever was modding your GRS yet. <laughs> I remember. Find, <laughs> if I can find the secret buttons on your, <laughs> I was like, when I plug it in, Windows is showing that there's extra buttons. <laughs> but there's only six of them. Why? I was like, there has to be something. And so that was my very first ever attempt trying to use OBS and seeing if I can do it. Um, and that sparked a movement, Glenn. I mean, you, you really were a trailblazer in this home market community providing products upgraded things and sparked imagination like that yoke it was it was beautiful i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your beautiful yoke and well i, I gotta tell you wrong. there's Come. there's some there's some stuff coming out for that beautiful yoke still there'll be some attachments there. yeah I've been, I've been you know again like everyone else is on here it takes time for certain things to come to fruition yes but if you are a current owner of a jiras uh flight yoke there are some enhancements. Now, I'm not talking like a mount. We have that. I'm talking about enhancements, mm -hmm. modules, things you can attach, which will expand out its capabilities. And I'm hoping that'll be done in the next maybe couple of weeks. I can kind of show you what that's going to be. That's awesome to hear. So um, as a, I would say, quote unquote, the uh, your biggest yoke fan. <laughs> you definitely have. What do you have, like 20 of them? <laughs> Maybe something like that. I have a good number of them. I still have a few just in case. Um, uh, sadly, though, actually, at the current moment, I do not have an arcade with a yoke setup on it right now. Just just because I had no, sold sadly, though, actually, my original. Moment, oh, what, sorry. Um, I sold my my original arcade one up mod uh, to kind of make space for maybe building a cockpit at some point in time because I invested. That would be cool. I mean, um, retro recipes. You know, he he has yeah. one. A few other people built them out, and those are awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, the 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 RK one up. I I have to give kudos where it is. The Tron cabinet and the Star Wars cabinet are, in my opinion, like the best they ever did. But that a sit down one where it's enclosed. Yes. And that's that's Everybody like that's one, next man. level. That's, that's next, next level. level. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of that and try to build my own cockpit, which I did. I, I actually purchased the shell, and that's a future project I hope to still get done. And then yes, your GRS yoke will be front and center. In fact, I, I can't wait to see what upgrades you have. And if I could redo a Starcade playlist 3.0, you would definitely be the first person to I'll, I'll definitely it. say if anyone likes games like Spy Hunter. Or some of the current Star Wars games that require, I don't know, other throttle type things. That's kind of where we're, we're going. Yeah. So I don't know if you remember officially being on my show the first oh, yeah. time I you. It, you were on my show, uh, episode number four. And I brought you on with my old co worker. Uh, his name was Magnum when he was on the like a amateur profession. I was just like, I was trying yep. to just 
bring random think people together and just talk about other things. And so uh, I was talking to Grant and then I eventually brought you on. I was just trying to find ways to bring different guests together. So it was early in my YouTube career and having you come on in those early days, it really helped build some credibility to kind of what I was trying to do. And look, look I'm still wearing the same hoodie. Like uh, three years later, I'm looking at how many times I wore this hoodie on stream. It's <laughs> accidental. Um, well, don't feel bad. That same shirt I've had for six, uh, 10 years. So you're, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you again for coming on those early days. I really appreciate you. And, and you have your synthesizer and all your other things. So um, <laughs> I'm curious for you, since you've been on YouTube and you've gone through having weekly shows and you've kind of stepped away and you've relaunched shows. Um, so maybe any thoughts you could share with me on kind of going through the same process and how you still find ways to, you know, make content and be, uh, you know, on YouTube and things. I'd love to hear from you. Well, I'm doing this, uh, 10 years now, you know, we, we had, uh, you know, we had, um, uh, the, the, the retro buzz and we had a, a game time and now I'm doing kicking it old school and it's, and sometimes it is hard and sometimes you do need to take a step back and, and, um, reorganize it so uh, i i kind of agree doing it weekly can be can be difficult um fortunately mine's a seinfeld show on fridays it's a show about nothing where you just kind of talk and <laughs> engage people yeah. but when you really want to talk about a specific thing it's kind of hard to always get a guest lined up always have a specific yeah. topic and and to be ready for it in a week mm -hmm. you know it, it's, it is difficult so yeah. my only thing i could say to you is what you're doing right now is you're you're realizing you know what doing it every week is maybe not the right thing to do to give the best content. You, you want to make good content. So sometimes it comes out at maybe a, a uh, twice a month or, or once every couple of weeks, whatever it is, but as long as you're happy making the content, that's a big thing. I think all of us who do this does and people don't realize in the back end, it's a lot of work. Even my show <laughs> as it is, it's still a lot of work getting put into it, but you always want to do good content. You want to be entertaining. You want people yeah. to, um value the work you're putting into it and sometimes you take a step back um and if you feel that's what you want to do there's no advice i can give to you you know what you want to do what you have to do to make it happen got it thank you i, I appreciate that it's great to hear it from somebody who's kind of gone through that process yourself and I'm, I'm i'm with you right i'm looking at quality versus quantity and looking at ways that i can maximize my time not only with my family it's a great age my kids are 12 and seven right now, right? We're out of the pandemic. And so I've been doing a lot more active things. So I, it is time for that needed change. And it's not a goodbye forever. It's just a change in, in, in the weekly space. But I loved having you on in these early days. Look, this video even barely even got 367 views back then. So if you want to see <laughs> fun video of Glenn and, and an ECW wrestler, <laughs> check out episode I, six of the next level. With Glenn I still have on my channel, the video of videos, yeah. me, uh -huh. Retro Ralph, and cool toy yeah. the triad and it was like two frames a second the the video was horrible but i did have the triad going at that point that's cool yeah that would be fun to take a look at and, and have you kind of reflect on on oh don't look at it. it's horrible but i'm just saying that i had them on <laughs> it was it's terrible. a laugh it's, it's a laugh when we look at all this stuff all right glenn thanks for showing up i appreciate you for stopping in uh appreciate you kongs and kudos um see you at twenty thousand, fifty thousand, and then the hundred thousand <laughs> thank you good sir talk to you soon right. bye guys all right. Thanks, Glenn. It's great having him show up. I have a couple more guests backstage. This is fun. Just checking out. And for those that are waiting backstage, I appreciate you. I'm going to bring on some more folks in just a second. But first off, Ed and Soft, thank you so much for this $10 super chat. It says, thank you for everything you guys do. I'm going to miss seeing you guys every week. My brother and I appreciate all the love and support you guys showed us by having us on the show. Best of luck. Um, I, I appreciate you guys. And Soft were the guys of, uh, you know, working with the I Arcade and their Killer Clowns from Outer Space Circus Interstellar game. Uh, it was a fun, fun opportunity to connect with some web developers and see some behind the scenes stuff, man. I enjoyed having you guys on. And and, and so I think you joined one of my Sunday shows with Mrs. Kong's arrest. So maybe like I started blurring the lines of like, hey, if I can't do a show on Thursday, maybe I'll have next level guest on Sunday with my Sunday Funday show. So I, I was mixing stuff all the time. I confused myself on which show was which. I think people were confused that I actually even had a show called The Next Level or Sunday Funday show. It was like, it was confusing from a brand standpoint, which is one of the reasons why I probably really needed to 
to sit back and change all this stuff to you. And, and Bill Wright, thank you so much for the $5 super chat as well. I appreciate you, one of my early customers. All right, I'm bringing on guest number one, the very first guest that ever kicked off the Next Level Weekly Show. Uh, it was a Canadian gentleman who I, I, I think I, I don't know how to say your name properly. It's, it, Michael B says, it's Dejeuner, but I'm like, no, nah, it's Dagonet. No, I just know you as Dags. What's up, B? Sorry, I'm in the car heading back from a family event, but then definitely didn't want to miss the uh, the last episode of this uh, this amazing series that you had. So yeah, so yeah, for spelling wise, it's Dajne. I know Dajne, we tried to okay. link, but it's fine. Dags is good. That's the way I go. Everybody's happy. I love it, Dags. Uh, and so you were you were literally the series premiere of the next level. I remember you and I. You were one of my clients where I was doing commissions for Star Wars mods for a long time. Um, and uh, when you told me what you were doing, I was freaking amazed. And I was like, "Holy crap! I I love being a part of this project." Um, and so maybe you can talk about you have an interesting ar arcade journey too because not only did you build this but you were one of the people that went from real arcades to the home arcades and you you really like that transition versus many people have started in home arcades and now went to real arcades so i'd love to hear from you kind of where your current home arcade setup is at and, and you know share a little bit about your background yeah so obviously I've been collecting arcades for quite a long time or way before the arcade went up scene started as mm -hmm. you mentioned, uh, I had a few real arcades, probably five or six, which is mm -hmm. about the amount of space that I could handle in my basement. Mm -hmm. And then when the arcade one ups came out, I mean, that was a game changer from that perspective. I was you know, a bit older in the scale than most people in the community. Um, and I uh, just get tired of lugging those 800 pound cabinets up and down the stairs because mm -hmm. I would rotate them, you know, quite often. So it wasn't like I was keeping the old arcades stale. It was always changing, but it yeah. was getting to be kind of much. Got to the point where I remember when I bought my dual cruising USA cabs uh, i had to take them down to a part of the side panels so we had to de deconstruct the cabs to get them in the basement so when this stuff started coming out it was like i said you know just something that was like uh, a revelation for us able to take cabinets around i'm very big on moving my arcade around just 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 from an aesthetics perspective and nostalgia you know once every three months so it's this is this was you know kind of yeah. great for me um yeah and then obviously when meeting with you you know we, we call glenn the the grandfather of, of, of the community in the arcade, but you are the man of the people, my friend. I mean, you've done so Thank much you. in the community from a, not just from the modding perspective, but just pe making people collaborate, you know, things, all that nature across, you know, this whole past few years. So hats off to you from uh, kind of binding us all together and making this fun. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. It was it was great having you as a first guest. Like even Retro Recipe showed up. He was like, "Who's who are these people talking about my cockpit build?" And it's like, "Nah, it's it's Dags's cockpit," you know. So like he start he made the first video, but then as soon as that happened, so many people were making their own cockpit. And so I think the story was you had a friend that took those designs and then made your own version, right? Yeah. So a cousin of mine who's uh very uh he's uh he's an engineer, so he builds bridges here in Canada. So obviously he's an AutoCAD fanatic and uh, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a purist arcade enthusiast. So he, uh, he has a Star Wars cockpit uh, as the original one. So we were able to kind of 3D scope that onto AutoCAD and then um, make the drawings out, found a local CNC manufacturer uh, that was also in the hobby and then, you know, started the dream from there. And there's a full scale, full replica. Um, and obviously I could have went with a CRT and, and, and made it original, but what's the fun in that, right? So obviously <laughs> when you and I, you and I, the, the you know, that's when your the Sarcade 2.0 was out. So reached yep. out and I said, you know, make this thing alive. And it took us a few months and a little bit of modification, and it came alive. And it's still there yeah. today. It's in my I'm arcade. So proud to have, I'm proud. I'm so proud to have my build and some of these amazing cockpit builds. And you know, because you can do once you're taking the time to mod something, you want it to do more than just the one game. And you know, this this was fun to be a proud of a project. And I've had a couple other cockpit builders that have finished their cabs. Angelo uh, Russo comes to mind, but yeah. you will always be the first number one. I had a dream someday that someday I'll do a future show and just bring, I think I did. I think I brought Mitt. I can't remember if I did or I wanted to bring all the cockpit builders together and just we have you it. all lined up inside of your cockpit. So, oh no, yeah, bro, we, we did have a show. I think there was three or four of us that were doing the yeah. cockpit. So yeah. I think so. I think I did that. So maybe it already happened. I can't remember. There's so many shows. Well, um, but I've had you on a couple of times, actually. I think I actually brought you on for your Donkey Kong cap, too. You remember that? Yeah, the Nintendo cabinets. Yeah, that was yeah. my next uh, big thing. There was a time where I had, 
I had Rexer, the Rexer show, Retro Ralph and Dags was on episode 28. And well, I was really interested uh, in Donkey Kong. And uh, I think Dags, you had made your own version of a Donkey Kong three quarter scale version of it. And I think Ralph had just posted he got a Donkey Kong. And so this was a fun discussion. We were talking about Donkey Kong. So it was it was cool to get bring multiple people together. You've been kind of a regular once in a while on different shows. Um, so yeah, man, I just appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by. I know that you're out with family and coming back. So I don't want to keep you too long, but thanks again, man. Any last Thank things you, you want to mention? Other projects you have going on? Um, right now I've been spending most time. I built the full size V pin. So that's with my cousin, same thing. And we're, you know, been playing along with that, doing a lot more of racing rig VR. So not so much on the arcade side, but I'll send you some pics. So I think you'll be interested my theater room where the Star Wars cockpit cabinet is, I'm turning it into a Star Wars room where I'm treating the walls and the ceilings and everything. So I think you're going to kind of like that. I'll send you that at a later date. Nice. Very cool. All right. Thanks again, man. Appreciate you. All right. Uh, hey, I appreciate everybody that's hanging out backstage. I think it's fun to have kind of a little bit of a connection with a few folks that are here. Um, um, and I'll try to get through this a little bit quicker, but uh, I, I'm going to bring on my next guest who, again, I'm kind of starting chronologically again. Uh, and so this guy, uh, I followed you, Mr. Vic VP, for a long time because you taught me how to mod my pinball machine. What's up, man? Hey, bro, what is up? I'm here, I'm here. I had to charge my dude. mic. Okay. I had to charge the mic. <laughs> yeah, dude. So this is one of the original guys that did virtual pinball uh, build something. I had Vic VP on episode seven of the next Oh, level. seven. I'm lucky number seven. That's the first one? Well, episode number seven, dude. We talked about arcade one-up pinball or DIY virtual pinball, because like you had done the whole virtual pinball build, and I had this dinky-ass small arcade one-up pinball that I was all excited about. And <laughs> I remember sharing with you for the first time like kind of what it was, and uh, I, I knew back then you were looking down at me like, what what the hell is this little dinky dinky toy? <laughs> so <laughs> nah, what did you man. really think of, of the three-quarter scale uh, you know, pinball machines back then? I can't believe that was, I, I was, I'm watching you guys. I literally have the kiddo down and I'm like, I think I was on B's stream three times or two times. And I yeah. figured the first one was for the V pin. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you got into the realm of getting your, uh, the whole hyper pin that you got, which I still want to talk to you about where I feel like yeah. we'll send it over to New York and I'll, I'll give it the upgrade <laughs> it needs. <laughs> It's it's almost there. It's 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 it's. I felt like it was almost done, but for sure, yeah. I had you on for this one. We had talked again later on about virtual pinball, but you do so much more than just virtual pinball. For folks that don't know, Vic VP, I mean, you are also. I guess I've been making friends with. Uh, you are a full time arcader now, right? Like you do this as like a full time business. Yes, full time. Even once I when I was on your stream originally, it's always been full time. It's now hit. Yeah. Uh, it's hit about three years. I would say three to four years. It's been full time. Yeah. That's I love, crazy, man. I yeah, love every yeah. second of it, dude. And then I remember yeah. I was going back and I was like, oh, I'm surprised you found it as number seven. And I think the most iconic or the funniest one that I feel like a lot of people saw was, um, I think it was the House of the Dead remake mod. And I think because of you, uh, I got Mystery Encoder. If you, don't, if you remember, he put in that script. He oh, was yeah? like big VP splooges for B because I had some fucking acid <laughs> on my pants. I was like, oh, <laughs> but I was like, yes, I made it. Mystery encoder. He uh, he gave me an fu on the script, and I was like, yes, that's a proud moment uh, for me. <laughs> that's funny, dude. So yeah, this is us talking about that V pen that I was working on in my garage, and and yeah, this is uh, still a project I have today. But look at that. Look at you don't even have that since the pinball party. No, know, so uh, it's I I just like was like putting down the kiddo. I have now. Mm -hmm. The Simpsons Virtual Pinball Party 2.0. So oh, that exact okay. one, it is now upgraded. It's a whole new cabinet with the 42-inch C3 OLED. But nice. I used the same artwork. I, I had it reprinted, obviously, but I had yeah. to keep my ode to my original V-Pin. All right. Well, cool, man. It was good having you on a couple of shows, and you kind of mentioned him, but I, I do have mystery encoder backstage so i'm gonna bring him on in just a second but vic vp man thanks for showing up man hang out yes. for a little bit i'm gonna bring everybody on in just a minute definitely um, just be real quick bro yeah i appreciate you no joke like since that first stream i feel like you like helped me in the views and all that so it's always good to take a little bit of a break i'm really happy 
uh, for you to see exactly, ex especially what's going to happen in the future. Uh, I feel like you're going like the retro Ralph way where even now I was watching, I was, you know, before your four minute classic countdown, you know, people <laughs> all, uh, they're all writing about RK one up and I'm like, my man B he's gone into the realm of now bigger and better. So again, B, I really give you <laughs> a big you shout out. Elitist. I see you. I see you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I give you a big <laughs> shout out, dude, man. Cause I, just, I feel like with, with that first stream and then to the second stream and now I had to jump on this one, B bro, you are legendary. And I, I really want to appreciate it and say, thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate you, Vic. All right. Hang out. All right. So, um, there, there was a point in time, that, uh, you know, I would say I was doing okay in the home arcade modding space. Um, and I know I have a couple other guests backstage too, but there was one person that I think really exponentially uh, made my channel grow as uh, doing tutorials and modding and getting the best out of the home arcade space. Uh, and it was the amazing story of uh, one other mystery encoder who is retro lizard is my mystery bay what's up man what's going on dude dude thanks for showing up i appreciate you hanging out backstage and uh chatting with me but what what are you thinking about from the first time that we ever met to now like any well, reflections on i i think realistically a lot of people don't realize that you are the reason team encoder exists in a lot of ways hmm and and yeah. the entity or or identity of mystery encoder exists as well like because it was i was up late one night and people mm -hmm. were screwing with some pinball stuff mm -hmm. and it was like we're gonna drop this powershell script anonymously and show these noobs that they're noobs that are you know i think it was big Reese and a bunch of people were like oh we're, we're gonna put all the pinball tables on one machine so you release some PowerShell script, this fucking asshole YouTuber comes out of nowhere and goes, this is the most difficult crap, fuck this guy, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. It was Big Reese that said that? Huh? Who was the guy that said it was You! It was me? You, you were the asshole YouTuber that got a hold of the script, and it was basically, I mean, in that script, <laughs> there was, like, the thing that said, like, if any YouTuber touches this, you're an asshole or something. <laughs> <laughs> and so you made a tutorial and you go i i'm gonna be that asshole and this mystery encoder guy fuck him yes. and blah 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 yeah that's when we and didn't so really actually know who you were or at least i didn't know how to contact with you and it was like yeah i saw the mystery powershell script and was like all right let's make some content on this and this well and that's what it this. was it was like well yeah. shit i didn't realize how hard it was until i saw you attempt it live Sorry. and it was and that's part of it right is people could do published <laughs> videos and they can do uh -huh. these live ones like yeah. they can do a published video where they figured it all out already. Yeah. And that's not the same as me as somebody that, that doesn't understand it from everybody else's perspective. Yeah. Watching you struggle your way through it. And <laughs> and that's sort of what created the idea of team encoder was like, man, we have to fucking support this crap. Yeah. For people Even like me, you but you know, I, I'm just a uh, part of the community. I'm just your glorified end user that, you know, is trying to help you do some live beta testing. I figured that was half the charm of, all of these projects, right? Is that can we get the layperson to figure this out? And I think you're successful for the most part. I don't think you're the layperson, but mm -hmm. at the same time, yeah. I mean, that's. I just wanted to say that a lot of people don't know that you are the one to credit for a lot of that. I, I wouldn't and have been interested. I don't even remember how I called you mystery encoder, right? Was it a mystery coder at first, and then I just made a mistake somewhere, and then you like officially became encoder. Yeah, you you screwed up and said it in coder <laughs> instead of coder because everybody kept saying coder. Who's this mystery coder? I was like, oh, it's the mystery encoder. It's like, uh, yeah, I think I think. Yeah, and know. and cool toy called me a jackhole. And... <laughs> yeah, and so when I started doing the the pinball shows, um, it was uh, how to mod your pinball machines, and uh, I think we even started to we did a Paw Patrol Baby Cade live modding demo yep. together. Um, do you remember the Baby Cade mod? Like this is yep. fun. Like, that, and everybody thought I was joking. You uh -huh. you asked me what my next release was, and I said Paw Patrol. I remember, I didn't even remember having Akuma Rev on here at the same time, and we had Angel on here at the same Rev? time. We, like everybody wanted to do this Paw Patrol mod, man. Like, when you look. and I started talking a lot, Rev used to be on a lot of the live streams that we did. He asked if he could order yeah. pizza on the pinball machine. Oh, <laughs> is that became one of the jokes? Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's it's been a fun adventure. Um, yeah. it's been fun when you ask me, hey, you got anything for me every Thursday? And 
that was pretty apparent that there was a grind in the background that people didn't know about. It was like, hey, man, I kind of don't have anything. You got something? And I'm like, yeah, I can try to come up with something. <laughs> like, this is fun. This is us talking about the Pinball Hack Live. And again, like you said, Rev was in the background a lot of this stuff. And we we're going through all the different FUs and <laughs> yeah, all the different things. But I uh, definitely this, came up with some fiction about John D. Some, some fun things, man. You've provided a lot of fun community to the community. You, Team Encoder, everybody else has been doing stuff. Um, it's been a journey. So uh, I'm not, again, going away. If you need a jackhole, asshole YouTuber to cover any of your arcade one up, pinball or any other mods that you got going on i think some people were holding me accountable that uh 4.0 version 4.0 pinball still needs to happen at some point in time is that can you give us any updates is that still something that's going to be on the horizon yeah i'm hoping a couple months out but like uh retro i think it was a retro lizard said earlier a lot of people are growing out of modding arcades uh, arcade one-ups and that doesn't uh exclude me either i yeah it's getting a little old man yeah yeah i think we're kind of evolving into the next thing so if you weren't doing modding of these home arcade machines is there any other hobbies that you're interested in that people might be interested in following do you do nothing you... nothing under this identity you're under this team <laughs> this may sunset at some point in time but hey the latest stuff that misdirection is doing you know i think there's a few people that still appreciate all the little things that you do yeah and uh you created think... a legacy man I think as a team, we have a few more things to release, but I think we're all burning out pretty, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks again for hopping in. I appreciate you. You have another member of Team Encoder that's here, Dmod, saying uh, $19 super chat. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate that. Was going to send you pizza, but take this instead. Thanks for all the great content over the years. That's probably one of the funniest and scariest moments of my life where <laughs> you guys found out to where where we were at in game that was 100 percent his idea and it was so funny watching it too because it was literally just <laughs> looking up bnbs in the area and finding that there was the same like picture or something in the background on one of them yeah it yeah. was just so stupid or a carpet or something <laughs> we, we were not good at hiding our location like hmm <laughs> pizza what yeah it was one of the uh iconic home arcade moments i would say so thanks again dmod appreciate that uh mystery encoder I bid you adieu on this next level show, but we'll see you again soon. Let me know when 4.0 is out. Happy to bring you back on, make some content, whatever you like. We'll do, this man. This asshole YouTuber is yours in service, my friend. And, and other and, people had stories of meeting you in person, so I wanted to tell mine. You yeah. actually ate lunch with myself, my wife, and one of my children. We went and checked out some pinball machines. And a lot of people don't know this, but B also hooked me up with a toy shock machine that I was supposed to mod. And, and we have played with, yeah. just haven't released anything. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's kind of stupid. You yeah. can run the Williams tables in 1080p on that, and it's worse mm -hmm. hardware than an arcade one up. So that's how bad their <laughs> software is. So yeah. one day we're going to release something for that eventually, yeah. just as a tribute to the fact that you gave that to me. And B yeah. was also the reason I managed to get hold of a Star Wars cabinet back then, too. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So I really appreciated meeting you and getting to know you and your family as well. It just it brings people to life when we get to connect a little bit. So I uh, hope yeah. you're doing well. Hope the family's well, man. We'll catch up soon. Yep. All Thanks, right. Thanks. Uh, so right afterwards, you saw on uh, the stream, I I'm having such a good time. I know we're over an hour, but who fucking cares? I'm going to keep talking to these people and they're bringing them on afterwards. But um, one of the guys, I've, I appreciate it from the beginning of the home arcade modding community, the legend, Mr. Angel Otero Jr. Hey. What's going on, man? What's going on? How are you, man? I feel like I'm just talking to an all-star cast of like, legends you know i, I, this is, I feel this is so great. honored and humble right here to be part of this list mm -hmm. and I, I to see everybody it's like it's like we're doing a big giant roast for you buddy <laughs> <laughs> a little bit yeah i don't know how yeah. i feel about it but i was just like hey i'm gonna do a finale it'd be cool to just talk to everybody i was gonna i was gonna talk by myself but like dude oh, this I, is wonderful, I had man. i did this uh a baby cave live modding demo but then i had you on really shortly after and we we're talking about uh the paw patrol baby cade mod so i mean yeah. i had you on officially on this show on episode 46 mm -hmm. but i mean i've been working with your products and i've had you on as a vendor talking about the marquee business but you've also grown a lot in the last three years in the home market space so for folks in the hotel, are you still doing marquees is that still your bread and butter or have you moved on to other stuff for, for yeah i mean i mean i still i do a marquee here and there i mean they're not as as much as it was in the beginning i'm trying mm -hmm. to 
not get away from it. I'm just trying to do different things. So I'm not bored at the job, mm-hmm. but um, you know, it's it's been a great adventure. I gotta say, man, and and the way everybody repeats it over and over, three years. I can't believe three years in the making with us all together. Yeah, so it's, it's crazy. It's like really. What What do you think has been the best seller of a marquee that you've gotten that you've sold over the years? You have actually helped me sell that Star Wars marquee a lot. Everybody. The, the comes- one? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, everybody comes to me and, and nice. sends me a clip of your video uh-huh. or image of your video and say, hey, Angel, I need this marquee. Nice. Like, uh, yeah, okay. And, you, and, you know, it's it the best enclosed version of that, like, for sure. It looked, it's really good. Like I like I said, the only thing <laughs> I always give you feedback, right, is like if the we can work on the, the um, what is it, the washout from the light thing. That's the only I'll thing. Be, I'll that, be, it's beautiful. Be, I'll be honest with you. I've made you a new one. I just never sent it. Ah, it's okay. It's all because I, I, I saw you made a new uh new Star Wars cat back there, and I, I know and I, I, I owe you some dimensions of this. Yeah, this yeah, is hard I want, I want dimensions I on that so I can yeah. build that for you. Yeah, but, um, for sure. yeah, it's you. We'll collaborate for sure. I'm not. I'm not going away. Whenever, whenever you want, my friend. Whenever, but um, yeah. it's it's been a great humbling feeling, man. Knowing you, meeting you. You know, I didn't get to meet you in person yet, but that's that's in the horizon. That's I want. Cool. I'm looking to travel and. And catch everybody by surprise, you know, and, yeah. and and see everybody in person and say hello. But it's it's meeting you, to, uh, you know, getting to talk to you, be on your show. It's been a humbling feeling, man. And I really appreciate the love you gave me by adding me on there. Yeah, thank you, Angel. I appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah, we'll bring you back on in just a little bit. But, man, you're a legend in your own right. Uh, thank appreciate you again it. for all the stuff you've done for the community over the years. Uh, happy to have you as a friend, man. I hope we do get to meet each other someday. I hope so too, man. I really do. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Angel. I'll bring you back on in just a second. Okay, we have just a few more people uh, to say hello to. They came on backstage. I'm so excited to bring some of these people on. Oh my God, I'm like, gonna get emotional here. But um, my man, my buddy, oh my goodness, Mr. To Die For, Bobby Vu. Clean like a mother, yeah, 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 to die for. Fuck, man. What's up, this buddy? Long, long time, man. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the invite. It's been a while. It's been too long, man. Bobby, yeah, it is. Man. I can't say enough about what you've done for, for me and this channel and just modding in the community. You know, just just thank you for for being you, man. And, and No, thank you for inviting it. me. And, and thank yeah. you for that. Um, You're one of a kind. It's kind. Your Star Wars mod, I still kept it. I'm, I'm still waiting for more updates, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Master of collaboration, you man. You bring all the smart people together. So I, 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 at one point, I felt like Bobby collected me <laughs> into his like treasure trove of people modding stuff and being part of your enclave of things, man. But how you been, man? How, how's it been? How do you feel like three years ago we were doing all this shit in our backyards and man, it, it feels, day. it feels, it feels just like yesterday, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I continue mod and keep going on and nonstop. It's like, it's crazy being, you know, creative, getting, get more ideas and, you know, and yours too. I still have your stuff, you know, we need yeah. to still collaborate. You know, it's been delayed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. We still have some projects to work on together, right? We yeah. The, the, the Star Wars cockpit and, uh, <laughs> and, the, and the gun and the gun you got yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that yeah. Gun. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For sure, man. That's awesome. And so I know that like, we we live too close, but we need to see each other more often, man. I know. Yeah, we need we need to hang out soon. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I come a little late because uh this family issue, you know. So I had to um set up stuff for the for the weekend because um someone's one of my family members passed away, so I had to set up a funeral. That's why I was a little late. But anyways, at least I'm here. Let's thank go, you, man. All right. Yeah, thank you. Condolences to you, man. I know it's a rough time for you, but I appreciate you spending some time to stop. Right, thank by. you. Hey, yes. Quack too. Where the hell is Quack, man? Man, he's uh, <laughs> Mr. Shy Boy. Man, get, get him on. Mr. Shy Boy, you come off, you'd be all naked, and, and you know, he's coming out here. So yeah, <laughs> I went to your house, and you like had your shirt off. He was all like, you know, all buff and swole. Uh, I was like, damn, I need to work <laughs> right? out. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Good times, man. Thank you for popping in. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah. Like well thanks for the invite. You know, yeah. hello everyone in the chat, and um, stay tuned for more to die for stuff goodies. Right? Yeah, um, Bobby. Uh, I did so many collabs on YouTube with Bobby. I mean, it wasn't even technically next level stuff, right? We did live modding at your house. Uh, you know, we did the mod giveaway. Mod yeah, giveaway my one. That was, you know what? That was like like the best back in the days. Like it was yeah. so fun. You know, 
giving prizes yeah. away. I, I give like yeah. I remember what I give away. Uh, uh at games legends pinball and at yeah. games you no know, all kinds of at games. I get thousands away throughout all these years. You know, yeah. you know, I'm here for the community. You know, I don't mind at all. Bobby Vu, legend in the community, right here. This was kind of one of the episodes we did for uh, the Mod Wars Legends Connect. We had P Dubs as an entrance. We had Bobby kind of supporting out this thing too. So this was this was fun to to kind of do Mod yeah. Wars, and uh, you know, it was just a fun to to collaborate with you on on all the different projects we did together. So you're a legend, man. Anything else you've been working on? I've seen that that crazy ass Transformers mod that you did. I know it's your favorite Transformer. I know it's your favorite. I tell you, B, it, it, no, pictures and video doesn't do justice. You need to be in person. It looks amazing. Uh, I'll come out and check it out. I've seen that Bumblebee mod. It looks fantastic, man. You're always unique. I love how you use your creative outlet to, you know, put together these crazy concoctions of stuff. What's the craziest Clear coated thing paint, done? like glossy, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like a car. Yeah. What do you think right? of all the mods you've done? What's like the craziest thing that you've ever done that you made reality? What do you, what do you think? I made reality was the uh the night rider. The night the rider kit. cabinet. Okay. The yeah. kit I made the yeah. kit into reality, the, the front and the mm -hmm. steering wheel. It it was like the impossible, impossible. I managed to do it. I had yeah. to do a lot of work on that. You got yeah. that yoke out in order to get the to yeah. fit that little uh kit thing in there right in the center. It Remember was a lot the of work though. Project that never saw any YouTube time was that fucking Star Fox mod that we did together. Oh yeah, and that's right. Yeah, that's right. Used to have used to have that uh, picture to show it off. I think this picture's in the group because he picked it up and we never did a video on it. So. Yeah, we never get to showcase it. But uh, I guess he wanted to pick it up. He didn't want to. I think it was during COVID, was it, or before that? Yeah, because he wanted us to go to his house, and we we're like, fuck it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's right that's right oh uh, man it's good times having you on man i appreciate you hope you're good we'll connect yeah, thanks for invite yeah stay tuned for more and um i'll still be around i'm not going anywhere all right thanks all right. man Talk okay all right all right bobby vu the legend all right i got two three more people here to say hello to and then we'll bring everybody back on for kind of like final thoughts and things like that but all right i had a, i did a couple of shows early on um that not only did i want to show next level uh you know mods and things uh, i wanted to show next level game rooms i was very inspired by people that had amazing game rooms so this guy mr ron fowler hey man what's up he has one of the most amazing fucking game rooms in the entire not only home arcade space but just in card space like you have slot machines now like a row of them what the yep. hell my mother man she likes slot machines so i'll take care of her oh my goodness how gorgeous i gotta make you big i i like this is one of those things where like now we gotta go tour mode and i gotta make ron all big so we can see all the stuff that you're doing uh ron fowler uh he came on a show with a couple other people just about inspiring people's game rooms and this is freaking next level holy crap dude so what what has changed in the three years that you've been building this like what's the biggest thing that you've been adding Did, have you gotten rid of anything i know you're doing an expansion okay so let me flip my camera around yeah that'll probably help everything real quick uh um, yeah all right so i've added carpet um mm -hmm. i've added a bar here recently oh that carpet is nice so yeah the carpet is black light responsive mm -hmm. really made the game room look good and i've added uh this whole bar over here so it's uh, i got a buddy over right now so what's up cody what's up guys and uh we're just hanging out i'm drinking a few beers you know watching some cheers on here but that's a full-fledged bar and i've got lots of liquor i've got a nice liquor shelves that light up with an ice machine and a kegerator uh, got a really nice bud light sign that i just bought so i mean it's it's came together pretty good that's the last part of mark that i've added i love it i love that you keep evolving and you know this this is just inspiring this is truly freaking next level stuff you have a facebook group called the arcade game room that that really you know super inspiring to see a full-on bar man this is the stuff of dreams this isn't just home arcade man this is man cave basement of dreams i appreciate Great. it man. you know i'm adding all these lights and stuff to the bar um, I'm gonna go and show the uh, rest of the arcade. I'm not gonna be able to hear too good in here, so then I'll. Come. Yeah. Any any anything that you're missing from your hard arcade that you haven't put together yet? Oh yeah, I'm, I've got a lot of plans coming. Um, I'm working on a seat 
for my Donkey Kong right now. I've got to add a cushion. I'm going to do a wood cut out of the DK emblem and paint it. Um, definitely got to get Punch out. I've got to get, um, you know, Donkey Kong Jr. I've got to get Popeye. There's like, I've got another 25 games or so planned. I know it doesn't look like I can pull it off, but believe me, I can. Yes. Uh, uh, and you still have one upstairs too. So you're not one of those people that are like, hey, you know, I don't need all re real cabs. I got some one ups still, right? Are you still cool with the one ups and as well yeah, as? Yeah, I'm cool with them. I've got all of mine upgraded now. Eventually, I will phase most of them out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm adding more and more, you know, originals, and that's where my heart's really at. But I can't take nothing away from these. I mean, they're they're nice, they're lightweight. Uh, I did upgrade all the buttons and stuff on most of them the sticks this is the one that's a refrigerator too so you know the mods are pretty straightforward and easy with them uh but eventually you know i will go full size i've got a lot of racing games of course uh it's gorgeous man this is all the, the stuff of dreams literally people are just saying like beautiful it's up dubs appreciate you man uh it's it's amazing what you've done and it keeps getting better each time I, i'd love to have you back on for a future time and you know at some point i like like i see in your game room i get really inadequate feelings about my game room and doing a real tour because you you're freaking next level ron i appreciate you giving us all inspiration for man cave of dreams this is amazing dude keep it up are you still doing your your uh get together for all the other folks i was looking for my earphones and i couldn't yeah. find them so that's I okay i are you are you doing your your get together still at all what is it now weren't you doing like a get together in your place or trying to host like an annual event yes yes uh i canceled the last one because of covid but i'm getting ready to try to do one this year I'm okay doing an 80s event um don't know if you would like to get involved but i'm gonna try to post that if you would it's cool but i'm gonna do it on the 24th but i'm gonna do another one on the weekend but right now i'm working two jobs so i have to do this first one on the 24th all right we're gonna all be dressed in the 80s outfits no it's gonna be really cool you know we're gonna have several mm -hmm. people over and we're just gonna hang out and play arcades and kind of party and be dressed all in the 80s so that's gonna be fun too sounds cool let me know when that is happy to at least pop in and support however i can i know i helped host your last party and it was fun man to bring this to the community so yeah. uh hopefully you guys have enjoyed seeing ron's room hang out backstage for a little bit ron thanks okay. so much for coming on I'll talk to you guys in a bit. So that's right. Ron. Uh, I was just showcasing his room, but Ron was uh, uh, on one of my shows um, where I think Next Level Room, uh, and I had Steven Tech Buzz on. And I just want to give a shout out to, I know you may not even remember her, but anybody remember Game Mom 77? I loved Game Mom 77's game room. She was really fun uh, and did some crazy mods with her um led lighting all over the place so shout out to her i know she's not really doing content anymore um, but i remember she was uh reluctant to come on a live stream but she, it was a fun conversation i had with ronnie steven tech buzz uh, who couldn't make it as well uh in game on 77 so we did some game room tours for everybody it was super fun to check it out i love doing stuff like this highlighting other people ron thank you so much for showing off your game room and things like that um all right we got a couple more people to say hello to You've heard that name before, Game Mom 77, right? She was so cool, man. All right. Uh, shout out to Game Mom 77. This was a fun trip down memory lane. Okay. <laughs> I'm 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 kind of wrapping up with a couple last minute guests, but I got another guy that started started came up out of nowhere when when Tron came out and he made my Tron absolutely next level. It was none other than Mr. Kai Cherry. What's going on, man? Are you there? Hi, Dick. How are you? Can you hear me? I oh, yeah, you hear you. What's going on, man? Uh, still making things, still doing my thing. Still see, making like, things. See, seems like you're doing less of your thing now, though, but that's all right. <laughs> well, thanks for the observation. Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm doing, <laughs> doing less things. That is that is true. Um, I found you, Kai Cherry, for folks that don't know, um, when you uh, came out with your S panel mod. And so for episode 38, I did a live modding of an S panel <laughs> and was like, hey, I, I think I just bought this 
And look, I had Glenn on the show, but I, I don't think I reached out to you just yet. I think I had just purchased mm -hmm. this and was just like, hey, I'm just a customer. And then eventually I found out who you really were. And then we started to connect and I started sharing ideas and you started sharing ideas and uh, yeah. it was fun. So, I mean, like when you saw kind of the community loving some of your products that you offered, like, you know, what was your initial thought of joining in kind of the home arcade modding space of offering your products to the community? Well, it was simple really i i remember that you know when i saw that the tron cabinet was coming out like glenn mm -hmm. said that mm -hmm. one is one of the best ones they ever built mm -hmm. but i i noticed that that whole s panel was just empty there was just nothing there mm -hmm. so i got a lot of pictures of it from a lot of different angles before it came out and did estimations of what the size was based on that cabinet and other cabinets like it and decided that I remember seeing that in real Tron machines, they were retrofitting large screens in it where the master control panel photo was. So I was like, oh, you can do this. I wonder if I could do this and my estimate my size estimates that I eyeballed and guessed were off by a few millimeters, which is why I came out of, as you said, nowhere, because I had already kind of pre-made it. Mm -hmm. I made one out of cardboard. It was so fast. As soon as it, it, the, the, as soon as it, it came out, I was amazed how fast you did that. But it makes sense now when you talk about how you did it. So. Right. And so then after that came out, it, you know, people liked it and everything. I, I mm -hmm. was trying to think of ways to Mm -hmm. make it better and the only way that i could mm -hmm. make it we could it could be made better was to make be made, to able to make it bigger which mm -hmm. at the time was cost prohibitive or to make the art better yeah. so what we did was we actually had a bunch of we I, I, there's an actual commercial printer that i found that was able to print real neon art so that people could add it to their cabinets or s panels or anything else and then Actually, it was you and Brad that conned me. I'm sorry, convinced me <laughs> to your, your coin door <laughs> to further enhance that cabinet by going. No, there's no coin door that anyone's ever made that looks like that old coin door. And I was like, yeah, yeah no, that's right. And then I figured out why because of those stupid ass coin drops. So <laughs> I actually went and bought one at an auction. Oh my then goodness. We, and then because the arcade one ups are three fourth scale, obviously it was too big. So I had to buy one, make molds of it, and we mixed naphtha into the molds. Then had to wait like almost a month for the molds to shrink 25% so they would be in scale before we could start making those coin doors. Um, and then, you know, made other stuff, then made stuff for the arcade one up pinballs. When they came out, little accessories, things like that, kind of kept going. It was actually pretty fun. And it's funny that you guys were all talking about V-pins and how it's like, oh, I had my dicky one, then I had a huge one, now mm -hmm. I've got big ones. It's funny because I started the other one. The I started with, yes, with a, and it was a big giant V-pin that is now disassembled down. in my <laughs> garage. And you like the then, tiny one. The, well, kind of. <laughs> so what has ended up happening to the tiny one, the, the nice mods and everything were fine. That all has gone away. And it actually is sort of like my old original first small mini V pin. Because I originally started with one that only had two screens. But this one has all of that. It has the solenoids in it that Arcade went up generously put in. Um, it's got a nice display that runs at 60. It's got a nice tiny PC in it, and it's also running virtual pinball tables, but it's not running them on Windows. So it's much easier for me to deal with. And 
You're Thank smarty you. pants, Ty. That's all I can say. So I mean, like you, <laughs> you, 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 the messages you send me with all your the technical side of things, like it makes sense. I'm reading it, but I was like, man, this this guy has a lot on his mind. He wants to try to make these things reality and and say it's so simple. But you know, this is an example of not only did you do this for for Tron, but you started making more bezel mods and other things too. So uh, Kai is R N S K Skunk Works. You've also been able to provide some coin door op things. Uh, I just love that you've been able. I know that you did want to. We actually did. You want to make a virtual actually, small kit, or no? We okay. So I'm looking at a way to do that. I've actually we actually changed that that uh, okay. S panel. It's actually we actually have a much bigger one because the display. Why don't I have it? Did I did I get the, the bootleg I, version? I told you about it, but you were like, I don't care about that laying stuff anymore. Uh, I was the one I that gave you feedback for the that. quality of your, your stuff uh, as you outsource your parts to somebody else. I was like, hi, man. I'm a pay paying customer, supporting, man. So I'm glad you've been upping your quality with stuff. So, Yeah, you should have a look at the bigger one. You'd probably like yeah. it better. It's much, it's much closer to the actual arcade mod. That yeah. was built on the real trons. It's like a 15 inch S panel. It's nice. beautiful. I might, I'm, but, I'm, I'd be happy to take a look at it and go back to it. A lot of these folks and vendors that um, I've had on the show, um, I really do support. I, I've, I've purchased most of my things from you, Kai. I think you've sent me a couple extra things before. So thank you mm -hmm. for collaborating with me. And I know you. I've never used your um, the Star Wars panel that you made for me. I've never found a space yet to utilize it. I, I, I was thinking I would put it in my cockpit, but I never was never got to install it on something yet. So I still have it. I have a dream someday that I'll eventually will use that thing. Um, send it I, back and I'll send you the new ones. They're much better. <laughs> okay. That skunk panel, that whole skunk port on, is is big and beautiful and full size like in Star Wars instead of that little dinky thing at the bottom. Uh, yeah, I was, I was I'll send about you a the, picture. Send me some pictures, man. I'd appreciate that. Kai, I appreciate yeah, you coming on. Later, man. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So good. All right, I have one final guest to bring on uh, who's backstage, uh, and then I'm gonna bring everybody back on uh, who's still with us. Um, but this guy, uh, I'm gonna say I, I was responsible for him actually making this logo. Is this not right, <laughs> Laramie? Hey, B Kong, what's up? What's going on? Retro 530, Retro Laramie 530. Griffith, man. Hey, what what's a show, on? B, what a show. And props yeah. to you for bringing everybody on and. You know, just kind of watching this, this, uh, you know, this last of the next level, man. Everybody that's been on here has done some next level stuff, including your your stuff, man. Has always been next level. And when I got that message today for the invite, I was like, I gotta, I gotta go on and you know, give my flowers to the man that's really been holding down the community and just been a tremendous source of videos, of tutorials, and just sharing all of your knowledge. And uh, you know, props to you and thanks for bringing everybody on and you know, showing everybody what's up with the next level. Yeah, thanks. That That's really cool. I think it was it was one of my early shows. Uh, I think it was episode 120. Uh, and then I was making a thumbnail for this. And I was like, Laramie, where's, where's your logo? <laughs> <laughs> and I had yeah. like five stuff in Tulsa and Gulf Coast. And then... <laughs> I think on the right corner, I just found something that said Retro 530 with a Donkey Kong on it or something like that. And so um, this was in the early days. So where are you at today now from this time three years ago? This was two years ago and yeah. July 29, 2021. And look at you now being one of the premier vendors for Home Arcade Community. So yeah, it's, can, you, it's a, can you talk it's a about that? Yeah, it's a tremendous honor to be, um, per, you know, part of this community for, for as long as it has. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I can honestly say I got a great relationship with everybody and, and mm -hmm. uh, I know that there's, um, you know, a lot of love and support for, you know, what we do and what we enjoy. And I'm just kind of happy to be a part of it. And, um, you know, just when you're talking to Kai, it just kind of brings back, you know, I met, met Kai when you invited all, us, all uh, a lot of us out, you know, um, to the, uh, one up, uh, John D's oh, yeah, office I got to there. See you in person yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, just meeting everybody in person, and and um, you know, kind of putting a face to you know face to face meet from from watching the videos and stuff. And and uh, like Brad was saying, I, I think earlier he was just like when I when I first when you guys met, it was just like instant connection. Like you guys have been friends, you know, for a long time. And that's kind of how I felt meeting you for the first time and Mrs. Kong's and you know everybody else that showed up 
So, um, but yeah, I, I, Retro 530 is busy. I'm going through another batch of Big Buck Hunter marquees right now. So I know a lot of people are waiting for those. So um, just staying busy and, you know, helping out as much as I can and trying to innovate and come up with new, new creative things to kind of help everybody out with their modding and, you know, kind of upgrading their cabs. Yeah. Would you say the Big Buck marquee is like the biggest, most popular thing you've done? I'm curious, like, what would you say is your best selling thing versus like kind of what people know you for? It was the most ambitious project. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and, and uh, props to Brandon at uh, Arcade Mountain. You know, That's he, right. he, Arcade yeah, he Mountain. Was, yeah, oh, yeah. I love that dude. Yeah. I still talk to him every once in a while. He's, yeah. he's in the, uh, the hobby business now. So doing. Okay doing hobbies and stuff and models and stuff but um he's killing it over there but anyways yeah he was he was kind of the one that kind of brought up the idea of it and uh, we were brainstorming back and forth and and a couple of days went by and we came up with a really really what we thought everybody would really enjoy and so uh, we made it happen and we've you know put a lot of a lot of those marquees on the those big buck hunter arcades yes, which they need did. Yeah, so I guess he did. They absolutely needed it. I was sad to see it go because it was so beautiful. I remember having one of the early first ones, but I'm glad that that was one of the most popular. But you've done some other innovative stuff, like the molded coin doors. Have the, have those been selling pretty well too? Like, yeah, yeah, they've been selling really well. I'm probably almost through my first uh, large order uh, from the nice. manufacturing company that I ordered them through. Love to hear that, so, man. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, and and your video yeah. really helped. Um, kind of expanded it, you know, because. Mm -hmm. when we had networked and talked about, you know, Hey, what are some new things happening? It was, you know, people trying to connect stock mm -hmm. cabs to the buttons and yeah. um, it wasn't that easy. And we kind of went back and forth and I said, Hey, I'm going to send you these harnesses and let me know what you think. And then uh, it you happen. did an awesome, awesome. Yeah, it happened. And you did an awesome video. And that, that, that video is linked and shows up, you know, uh, to help people that are, you know, kind of curious on how to do it. And most importantly, how difficult is it? And it's not really difficult a little bit of work but you know we try to yeah. you know your videos help simplify it and then i just try to come up with stuff to make it a little bit more easier yeah you know, that's for... always been the goal is trying to take what seems complicated and make it simple and, and right. i think I, I feel proud that some of my videos have made it onto like your tutorial websites and and things like that too so it's been an honor to partner and collaborate with you see the growth of you over the years, I look at all these faces here on the stream. I, this this is probably one of my favorite streams was talking to all the modding people I had bought many many products from, <laughs> and bringing them together and being like, hey, like what are some other cool things that you have? And you know, I still talk to many of these folks here. Greg for ninety nine lives, JC. Hope you're doing well. Buy stuff, guys. Inviting them out too. I know they couldn't make it. Tyler Arcade Graphics, Justin. I hope he's doing well. Um, so yeah, I, I, this is one of my favorite shows and I'm, I'm glad yeah, all great guys, that. uh, all great vendors that provide an excellent product for the community and, yeah. you know, just kind of happy to be a part of it and just a little sliver in it. So cool. All right. Thanks, Laramie. I appreciate it. Right, thanks, Pete. Congratulations. All right, thanks. All right. So man, we've been talking for an hour and a half. I still have a lot of my guests backstage. I'm going to bring them all on in just a second, but, um, I just want to say a, a big thank you to not only all the guests that I've had on. But you, the community, if you're watching this back on replay, if you're watching this now in the chat, um, you know, heartfelt thank you for those that have been sticking around to watch this channel grow over the last four years. This show has been around for about three years or so, but um, YouTube has been a, a special place for me able to have an outlet at a time where many of us needed it. We needed a way to be able to express our hobbies, our interests, things that make us passionate. And uh, for a long time, arcades became my session and uh not only that but the modding aspect of youtube was uh exciting to do and share that passion with like-minded individuals like everybody that was here um i i don't want to say that like my passion is gone for home arcades but i would say you know as as things change in life this is where i'm at with my youtube journey is i'm so happy and thrilled to have gotten to where i'm at that i'm okay kind of letting go doing the regular content uh in favor of spending more time on some more produce content that I feel like will be better quality, um, that you won't see shows that are slapped together last minute with me struggling to come up with the topic, which I feel like I half-ass and do okay, but in my heart, I know I could always do better. And, uh, you know, P-Dubs gave me some advice and was saying things like, yeah, if, if you don't feel passionate about a show topic, then it co it'll come across that way. And, um, you know, I don't want to get to that point. So this isn't a formal goodbye. It is just a end of a weekly show 
that the next level was. And I'm proud of all the episodes I had of some of the amazing guests and projects that we've seen throughout this show. Uh, it won't be the last time. Whoops, I just turned on my Godzilla mod. May not be the last time you see any of these guests on my show uh, or my YouTube channel. I, I think I may still occasionally, uh, you know, pop in and either do a produced video or host some other live streams with these guests if they have cool projects going on. A one up pinner 4.0 gun for IR. If any of these cool projects come out and it excites me, fuck, that's the that's the most exciting part of the hobby for me. It just it's not happening every Thursday anymore. Um, so that's the kind of final bit that I want to say. So let's go ahead and bring everybody back onto the stage to see <clears throat> the party of who's left what's going on everybody um i can only put 10 people on the screen so i'm sorry ray you're backstage but i'll bring you back on <laughs> ray was my last one <laughs> i'll take myself off really quickly and bring ray on and then you guys can talk shit about me right? man that b is an asshole <laughs> yeah, what what the the hell? Finally gone. it's about the time i waited a half an hour to bitch about him <laughs> Wow. I've been wow. sitting here all this He's time been and dragging I dragging us out. down all these years. It's I've been sober happened. for an hour. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. We are making history though, because this is like the biggest group. This is like the biggest group like video ever done. This is this is us. We all of us right here on the screen right now, we are that senior class. Of the modern really? community and the arcade community. Right now. You? I mean, my no, coming no, no, down. I'm saying senior, Come like in high school, man. Like, no, but it's been four years. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, this yeah, is our graduating yeah. class. Exactly. Oh, we've been yeah. around since we've been around since this community was just getting started, and we're still here and we're still doing things, you know. And this is the first time we've all been on screen all at once together. And yeah, I used to be cool. Angel's pit bull in the groups. Oh, man. Anytime somebody was doing something uh, wrong to him, I would message him like, yo, I got this motherfucker right now. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I think you scared some of the vendors off the community, man. I think I did too. You know, whatever happened to that arcade game factory? I died. Oh, right. I Lizard is an asshole, man. He constantly reminds me that soft mods are a waste of time. Bullshit harder doesn't fucking give me enough motivation. <laughs> oh man, but it's great to be here, man. It's a humbling feeling with you guys. I mean, to be part of this class and and B Kong has just been wonderful to all of us as well. Absolutely. Yes, he is a great guy. Who B Kong? You know, yeah. I said earlier that B was the one to owe for uh, Team Encoder existing. Angel's the one to owe for uh, the Infinity Table ever getting hacked, which is something I never wanted to touch. <laughs> the, funny, the funny thing, I never hacked mine. <laughs> Why you gotta hurt wow. him like that, man? He doesn't Jesus. like that kind of stuff. I never even hacked mine. I left it there. <laughs> but, I, man. but just just don't knock down the website so I can at least go back to it, you know? The the thing I never wanted to fucking touch and, and <laughs> didn't even do it. I didn't even didn't do, it. do it. Oh, oh do it. that's right. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's, to be it's fair, pretty... I used the Blue Estate one you made for me every day. So that I no, actually used that. A lot, of fun. A, lot, a lot of you guys had influence on things that happened. Like, I mean, Retro Lizard was one of the components of Light Gun stuff. Brad D was got called out in a read me for the HOD remake. <laughs> oh, the HOD. Man, Man Mr. Ray did, did you, Mr. Mr. is responsible for Big Buck Hunter for Windows, the arcade game, being able to play on Light Guns. We. We asked him as a group of people if he could see if he can do anything to make be yeah, be <laughs> wow. that's a better way to do wow. it. If he could do anything to get a light gun to work because it didn't have any mouse movement in the game, but we had mouse movement on the screen. So he is the reason why we got that version of that game working. That was like his first one that he put out. And I think the next one was the House of the Dead remake. No. Yeah, I think I think as a group, everybody kind of pushed each other to help each other. And, uh, you know, we're talking about like they're graduating class of the next level here. We were first the students. Now everybody's going off teaching. We're all little masters in our own domain. And we're still connecting with each other. We're still reaching out to the community. The community's getting bigger and bigger. And now we've maxed out Streamlabs with, with video uh, thumbnails <laughs> here. You know, I just, I, I, people are saying that the arcade modding scene is like dying down. Um, I think that it's, it's, it's at its peak. Um, and I, I it, Anything further than this is just going to be make it better. You know, the connection we made, the products we made, we've had people that were on this channel as just like users and fans. And now some of you guys are doing this professional full time. Right. That's really inspiring for a lot of the people watching these streams right now. So don't quit. Mm -hmm. Keep doing it. 
No, it's Ron is a professional like, arcade collector in his basement now. Did you see that yo, guy's that, basement? That <laughs> basement, that's a house. Ron's that is a gaming basement. house. That ain't no it basement. Has, that's a whole house. That what basement is, has evolved, I don't, man. I don't know. I'm a little offended. There's no ramp. Like, <laughs> get on that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Ron, yeah. where are you? Where are you physically located? Like to have that kind of space for that right, kind of space. Right, because I need a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> where, 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 where is this research. physically? I need to do research. So I need a ticket and a location, sir. Uh, Mr. Encoder can find them. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. there we go. You're hey, good. Are you you got a code to get into your house? Mr. Encoder can hack that. Oh man, I've been everybody. <laughs> we just hang out, we have fun. But uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, I've been finding stuff on Facebook primarily and through friends and people I've, I've met, you know, and it just kind of exploded. And <laughs> his hmm. accent sounds southwestern. Yeah, so Georgia accent maybe. Georgia. I'm in. I'm in. That's Kentucky. I'm in Is he Texas? Kentucky. He's in Where? Kentucky. Western Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky. Oh, okay. Barbecue yeah. and arcades. I like that. Cool. Arcades yeah. in the heartland. Exactly. So the bluegrass. You know, it's just having fun with print, basically, you know, uh, it's something I like to do. So, you know, I just, uh, in, in the community has been great. I started my arcade group just because I was in a few in the beginning that had a lot of trolls in it. And so I started mine just to be like, we just don't allow any kind of hatred and just have fun. Uh, you know, yep. beautiful. because some yeah. people, this may be the only thing somebody has that they enjoy. If somebody tries to uh, make them feel bad, so I was like, "That just won't happen in my group." It just, no, yeah, he, lets you, he lets you post your businesses and stuff in his group too, man. I post a lot of my stuff in Ron's groups. Ron's it shows group, that I mean, we don't yeah. want to let go. We don't want to let go of the past, and we enjoy being kids back in the days. I mean, arcades was the best thing for us. Exactly. I'm, I'm the opposite. Your my point, entire right? goal we're, is we're... to make you feel bad. I was about to say, yeah, the one person who can call it make us all feel bad is Mister. <laughs> So, but he does it we're, we're, we're a bunch of adult kids who get to play with our toys as much as we want to, right? Like, this is a and, dream come true exactly. for all of us, and we've all yeah. found each other, gravitated toward the same kind of community area. And you can see the ones who are, you know, active and posting and, and helping everybody out. I mean, you guys, especially like, you know, I know Retro Lizard, I got some of your stuff, right? We've, you, you know, your gun stuff and everything. And it's just, yeah, the community is amazing. And that's why I stick around. I'm not always active, but the reason is like, it's just, I like the help. And uh, inspire people to, to to do what they can do, right? Everybody in this Good. in this little picture right now has something from everybody in here. Exactly. Everybody does, whether you bought it or it was it was donated to you. We work together, something like that. Everybody on this show right or on this screen right now has mm -hmm. something for each of us. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll read it for you. I, that's, I think that's true. And yeah. I'm getting ready to uh, getting ready to try to figure out a sign to put in here, like Ron's retro arcade bar. Um, I've got to do something to this. This is a work in progress. This is my bar, but I've got to, I've got to get some kind of marquee for that. So send Angel. Send dimensions to Angel. Let right? me know. Let me know. <laughs> Angel One can dollar. I got you. Yeah. Uh, he will make uh, it and then he won't ship it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Just like you know, Peacock, like sitting there in the corner. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, he, so, he wants so me to read wanted it. Us, he yeah. wanted us to read this super chat. From yeah, Kevin Clausen, 19K Fox needs to be here wishing farewell. He's working in Taiwan right now, putting food on the table as a family, but it's no valid excuse. We're going to hold it against no. him that he wasn't here tonight. No. 19K Fox yeah, is Taiwan. Shit. He's I didn't pretty. know. <laughs> Wait, am I the youngest one here again? <laughs> yeah, keep, 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 keep rubbing it in. Than than sure. Probably, oh, yeah. 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 Shit. I think you're older than me. No, I think me, me and Vic are the same age, so he, I think he might have a like a, a, a month or two on me. But so how, I mean, Ray, you're forty. Stop it. <laughs> 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 I tell you this all the time. Remember, Don't lie about man, your age. We can tell. I just you drink like I'm forty. It's different. <laughs> man, <laughs> I, I would used to be jealous of the Vic's, blood of Vic's, uh, the tears of orphans to be forty again. Mm. <laughs> I used to be 40. jealous of Vic's arcade mm. until I saw Ron's. Word. Yeah, right. Right? <laughs> right. Same. 
I yeah, Victor Ron's... Arcade is crap now. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna post a video like every two weeks, dude. I love Ron's videos of him walking around his arcade, and then he's got, he's, dude, he does photo shoots in his arcades too, man. He's got some great photo shoots going on there, like like okay. Tristan Chris style photo shoots where he hires those models or yes, <laughs> no, they they just uh, I didn't hire anybody. They wanted to come over and do it. They're yeah. voluntary. They're his door uh, that's you that does that. That's yeah. him. I gotta go fast. No my transactions were done. Like it's all free. We just did another one, but I didn't post it thing because you know I've got I got some people last time that got mad about it and said it was disrespectful. So wow. I didn't post that's how you get them out of your group. Yeah. <laughs> did you see Kevin's message? Uh, no. The, show, the show's ending was the worst thing to hear today. Second worst thing today was opening YouTube and seeing 20 plus videos about Golden D. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to know what's going on with Golden D. I, I, uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't play Golden TA. That, hey, that was. <laughs> hey, I don't B, know that's, not, that's not cool, B. But it's an arcade one up usual, man. It's, it's another rehash of the same crap in a new form factor. Oh, uh, did they release a third one? But this one has a new hat. Deluxe. Is there is there any new games added to it besides Golden no. Tee? Like, do we get a bowling game? A pre-order, man. I think it's just the same games that were on the exact and, it, rooms, and it was like, only a pre-order. Oh. And YouTube went crazy. Yeah, it was only a pre-order. It's not even. Yeah, it's just a pre-order. Yeah. What is wrong with the community? Nobody I has am. content. Why do you think B's ending this show? Yeah, I'm waiting for B didn't want to talk about. B is now pinball. P B is pinball. He turned pinball. No, that's it. I, the reality of it is, most of us gave up on modding this stuff, or like you guys are running stores now instead of modding it for like community purposes, right? And so, right. there's not a lot of modding content left because we all moved on or evolved. We went to the next yeah. level. I stopped yeah. modding them because they were what six hundred dollars for a cab. So I'm like, I can no, it was it was the old day on a shell. Exactly. It was the old days like when you had a car and you were a teenager and that car was $300 and then you were pimping it out and trying to soup it up because you didn't care because it was a $300 car. So nowadays when our cabs were $300, we were modding them. But now we've moved on to uh, either some people went to full size arcades. Some people were still getting arcade one ups, but now for some reason they're $800. Yeah, like nobody nope. wants to mod them anymore at that right. point. Um, just right. buy, right. you know, uh, something that's already pimped out from places like Retro Lizard and whatnot. Um, or if you want to tinker, then you know you can go into real arcade restoration. You can do all kinds of stuff. Point is that the community supports all of it. Are it doesn't sure have to just be arcade MDF? one up mods, but it was a great gateway for everybody. Yep. Are you sure you don't want to buy MDF with with one game and a PCB? You have to put in an air fryer eventually. <laughs> it's so tempting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard about that. There's people putting PCBs in air fryers. You heard me laugh. Why? And doing what with it? Uh, when yeah. they burn out, they're reflowing them with an air fryer. What? It's like what? Really? Yeah, it's like a, a giant heat gun. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Okay, it's like putting they're it in the, it the, it's like doing the oven trick. Some guy in the pinball group stuck it in an air fryer at 200 degrees, and it worked. It started making the PCB what? work again. B, wow. you need to have Ooh. that guy on in like a month. That's bullshit. <laughs> right, that, that, we need a, that oh, is like next a dedicated channel. That is a, are you sure that's not so, a fraudulent video? Oh, no, it's like, real because there's a few people that have done it now. But the, the hell which, cab, hey, which cab was it? My T3? It's the pinball cabinets. I'll Coming know, soon, okay, retro what, lizard I'll... branded air fryers. It, yeah, it, right? I tell it, you it, what, I will, I will buy a pinball cabinet and then we'll do a show and I'll throw it in the air fryer live and so, let's see what it does. It isn't real until B does it first. So one of the guys that <laughs> yeah, well, Team true. Encoder is I'll Australian. Try everything once at least, right? You know, so <laughs> one you of the guys that's it. part of Team Encoder is an Australian, and so he read 200 degrees and goes, "Oh, 200 degrees Celsius? Why not?" No. <laughs> and so he maxed out the air fryer to max temp and put the pinball PCB in there and goes, I'm going to try this to see if they're full of shit. Had a capacitor everywhere. Oh, my God. <laughs> I am covered in capapacitor. <laughs> yeah. Fahrenheit, dude. He where did not know those were going to explode. in that capacitor were everywhere all over his PCB. There's a picture yeah. of it on the pinball group. There are funny. there are downsides to the fact that the community is worldwide, and we don't actually talk like, we're like, oh, we're all North America, right? So, right? Yeah, yeah. Who needs the metric system? <laughs> yeah. I did invite some guests in the UK to come on. Uh, Ian Newman was one of the guys that started making dust covers. He did the 3D printed dust covers for a long time for the, okay. you know, that was big in the early modding scene. It was, yeah. UK guy um, that I invited on, but he couldn't join on. So I've, I've had some international guests, which has been fun. 
Uh, but it's it's been fun having all of you on. Thank you all so much for you know sharing your individual stories. I just love actually just being backstage a second ago. I know uh, Laramie dropped off, so I hopped back on. But I was having a great time just listening to you guys banter. So uh, this has been probably one of my most favorite shows, uh, a finale for the ages. Let's start crying again. Together. Come on, uh, we gotta so, have a drink together. At least Ron right. has a bar there, please. Come on. I know. I I have a drink. Uh, no, I had I, some some cheap Coors Light. If anybody I was gonna juggle yeah. my camera for the last one, but my computer won't recognize it. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would have been amazing. Oh, that would have been amazing. <laughs> I, I'm just know that I'm drinking from my liquid my liquid death human skull tiki mug in honor of you. So. Okay. Oh, All right. There uh, you go. Do, uh, cheers to everybody. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, guys. cheers, guys. Let me just do a final drink. And I'm just going to go a quick round of horn. Any last thoughts one by one? So, Dag, you got anything? I'm just going to say thanks for letting me enjoy this ride with your creative for this for this particular series. And I'm looking forward to what else you're going to do. It was about and, uh, one third. That's it. Thanks. Appreciate that. Ron, any last minute things you want to say? Yeah, I was trying to tell, uh, yeah, I just wanted to thank you for everything you've done. I mean, you've helped the community. You've helped me. Um, you know, you've, uh, you've helped me with an event or two and just, um, you know, you've helped, you've helped everything grow, not just for me, but for everybody. So just wanted to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Still inspiring people with that game room, man. It's the stuff of dreams. Good stuff. Keep it up. Kai. Yeah. So what's what's uh since this is our senior graduation, I can't see wait to see what freshman year is like it. Um, you. <laughs> That'll be fun, man. I'm sure there'll still be next uh, next level content that's just not branded the next level stuff. So I look forward to connecting with you soon and seeing all your upgrades and things, man. Like right now in time. All right. Thanks, Kai. All right, Vic. B man, I just can't wait to see all the new stuff that you come out with. Uh, thanks again for everything you've done for me and for the community as always. B, I appreciate right. you. You are a great friend, and uh, thanks, bro. I'm gonna visit New York someday. I'm gonna come see that basement of yours. That that I'm coming to you. Crazily <laughs> tiny, man. I still don't know how you cut off the top of a pinball machine. That blows my uh, mind. Did that? Blows them on. Blasting me, blasting me, man. I can't. Brad, what's up, man? B, man, okay, thank you for going out on a high note, okay? And thank you for not getting burned out because, like, you know, I get it, all right? This, this is a great decision. I, I'm behind you 100%. I'm looking forward to the produced content, and I'm really looking forward to the fact that you're going to stay enthusiastic and keep inspiring the community. Cool. Thanks. I appreciate that, man. Thanks, Brad. Joel. Dude, just thank you for everything, man. Thank you for the recognition you gave the people in the community to bring on to your show and to show off their stuff who nobody knew who they were. Just thank you for everything really? you've done, man. No mod shaming at all on this channel. You're awesome, dude. I can't wait to see your next content that's coming up in your next videos. I can't wait to watch it. I can't wait to mod shame you some more, Joel. So, <laughs> Angel. Hey, man. Again, I want to say thank you, man. I appreciate it everything you've done for me for the community you know we all love you and we appreciate you and you deserve every flower you get from here on and like I, like everybody said i can't wait to see what you got next man because it's entertaining and it's wonderful to see you. yeah we, i gotta make sure how you can make that battle pod available for everybody right so man, we'll, i'll make it for we'll anybody connect. who wants it man let's do it <laughs> we'll connect man thanks angel uh, thanks buddy mystery encoder it's even encoder man I, same as everybody else man i want to say thank you and thank you for actually motivating me as well as the rest of the team on on soft modding some of these if you hadn't been checking them out and giving us a platform a lot of it may not have happened and uh everyone should invest in air fryers <laughs> RPEG, are you going to start selling air fryers now? Is that going to be a thing? Yeah, I sell anything that makes money. <laughs> you don't sell anything. Oh my God. You're not business, man. Oh, oh, not that already. already. Whiskey, so, I mean, like. <laughs> Gong, you, you helped me start my business. You're one of the first supporters of Gunfire R when I did this. You're my Southeast Asian homeboy, literally. Right. Yeah, uh, my family is from uh, Vietnam and Cambodia. So is Kong's. So it's uh, very rare. So. I'm so happy that you're making this move, and I look forward to being on your next uh, videos and shows, be it on YouTube or OnlyFans. 
whatever you like, whatever you like. <laughs> oh my goodness, the number of people that have asked if that'll happen, you know, if I'm really desperate, you know, I, I know no. get the, get advice from, from Ray on how to sell his soul and his uh, manhood for $2 and some beer. So. Make sure someone actually buys first and no one's buying, that's just sad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining. If you're watching this live, uh, appreciate all of you in the chat. Oh God. In here. Jason, Kevin, uh, you know, Jay Poss, uh, Team Inficial, Encoder, all of you folks that are here, Etn Soft, Cyber Styles, just saying a quick shout out to folks, Ritual, Adelo, Larry Griffith was here, Chris Nye, my goodness. Been a while. P Dubs are K Loft, the Corner Cade. What's up? Uh, so thank you all for joining in. James hates everything. If I missed you, I'm sorry. I just really wanted to get through this show. And if Eric, you're Billy. Me, okay. yes. This I is the final you fuck you of the now. series. Fuck you, be bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>